You are now tuned into Coinman's official channel, and we welcome you to the big picture. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Coinman's new podcast, The Big Picture. In this episode of today's podcast, we are joined by Karnik Gulati, who is currently a manager in our tax and regulatory services. And uh, given his experience of working with clientele with a relatively global presence, uh, you know, stemming from India, as well as those companies which are looking to set up operations in India or already are operating in India from, you know, different countries. Karnik's experience is going to be extremely pivotal in this particular discussion as to what we're going to do today. And um, given the you know onset of the coronavirus pandemic in India, it is imperative that you know companies know you know that what is the government doing currently to you know counter the situation, and uh, what are the provisions which they've given out, and you know what is the way forward basically. So as an advisor, it becomes extremely important, you know, as to, you know, how do you go on and, you know, speak to the industry experts that, hey, this is something, you know, which you can do. And uh, this is something, you know, which we advise you to do uh, as the way forward. So, and of course, you know, with the interactions from the industry, it becomes uh, extremely important to realize, you know, that industry dynamics overall. Can be. So on that note, uh, we hope to have a very, very insightful discussion. So, Karnik, I welcome you to the big picture. How are you doing today? Thank you, Sahib. I'm doing well. How about you? I'm doing very well, Karnik. Thank you so much. To start things off, I'm going to keep it very simple and nice and crisp. And we'll probably see you know, how the intensity of the conversation drives us to much more you know, insightful and deeper uh, discussions. So, uh, Karnik, uh, the coronavirus pandemic, you know, has essentially had a major hit on a lot of Indian and foreign businesses, which is a given, right? But uh, given your position as an advisor and uh, given your interactions, you know, with the people in the industry, so what do you think has been the overall sentiment or, you know, the overall verdict of the situation and the pandemic's impact? Could you please elaborate on that? Well, uh, you know, since uh, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty, obviously, you know, because of the it's not only a one country or you know 10 countries have been impacted if you see i was reading uh, somewhere it's 175 out of 195 countries have been impacted so that's almost one nine sorry 90 percent of countries so you know uh, it's obviously uh, very uncertain how the things will pan out in the next few days uh, you know developed countries have been impacted majorly thankfully india is you know still uh, doing pretty well on that front but you never know because it's a matter of time that if uh, you know it, it, it spreads so rapidly that it can lead to uh, you know further consequences but yeah you know speaking to the clients I believe uh, everyone is skeptical you know because the because of the uh, gravity of the situation and uh, no one knows when it when it when will it end and obviously what even if it ends, say, you know, in, in a week or 10 days time, but uh, it'll take time to recover because, you know, demand and supply both have been impacted, except very few industries, you know, like pharmaceutical or essential goods uh, items related. Every industry has been impacted. So obviously the clients are very, you know, that how the things will pan out. And, you know, it's much different from, uh, you know, kind of we were talking about India is, uh, you know, uh, slow down there's a slowdown in the economy so this is much different because uh, you know earlier even if there's a slowdown in economy the investors had you know from the developed nations had the money to pump in you know keep the cycle going but now even the funding will not be that easy because you know it's a global impact so it will have a far more repercussion far reaching impact and you know, it won't, uh, you know, uh, be, you know, uh, be, uh, you know, easy to come out of it. Okay, that's actually interesting that you mentioned that, you know, funding will become predominantly difficult. Something which is going to tie into my next question that uh, overall going forward, do you think India's perception as a market, you know, can be impacted? And do you think investor confidence, you know, might take, uh, you know, somewhat of a hit and investing might become a little jittery in terms of looking at India as a business destination? So if you could shed some light on that, please. No, see, I don't think so. Uh, this would impact India as a market, you know, as a 
you know, a major market because, you know, there is there is a consumer's market and there's a lot of consumption potential. So, uh, you know, it, this could not be the reason for, you know, India impacting, getting impacted on that front. The point I'm trying to make is that it will impact overall irrespective of the geography uh, because, uh, you know, so, so India is, again, are, obviously it's developing at a fast pace, but it's still a developing country and you need funding from, you know, capital exporting countries. So again, now that, you know, you can see the developed countries, you can USA, China, you know, Italy, in the, in, you know, most of the Europe, Spain. So there have been a lot of impact on them. So, you know, the, 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 the source of funding has been impacted badly. So, you know, it's important for them to come out of it, uh, you know, quickly so that, you know, the Indian economy is, uh, again, you know, uh, get, gets back on track soon. So it's more related to the funding thing rather than India's geography, because if, if, in, if not India, then there is no other country. I mean, you know, every other country is doing, you know, has suffered this impact in a more uh, serious uh, impact rather than what India has uh, impacted, has been impacted as of now. So I don't think this would, uh, take away India's benefits uh, of, you know, being most favored destination to invest because again, you know, everything remains, uh, the cost of, uh, you know, running a business is still cheaper in India. The labor is cheaper. So I don't think that will discourage investors. It's about investors having the money to put in, in India. That's actually a very interesting way of looking at things that, you know, the funding in itself might not get impacted, but the source of the funding, which is the other countries, you know, since they have been affected as well. So, you know, it sort of becomes a little bit of an obstacle, uh, which sort of brings me to the next question is that uh, funding, of course, is done in certain sectors which have been relatively prominent over the last few years and, you know, have grown exponentially in India. But while we understand that the pandemic's impact has been agnostic to, you know, most of the sectors sectors and most of the businesses, you know, pertaining to those sectors, there are certain specific industries which have been hit harder compared to the others. So number one, if you could identify which of those sectors uh, are there as per your observations and uh, number two, to sort of put out the fire, you know, which has, you know, erupted, do you think the government has done enough or is there more, you know, is there room for more at this particular stage as well as going forward? So what would be your thoughts on that? See, again, you know, I, as I mentioned earlier, that there's hardly any sector which has not been impacted. You know, I mean, even the pharma set, you know, pharma sector, we say that it's not been impacted. But again, normally their, you know, API, this is one of the raw material, active pharmaceutical ingredient is imported from China. You know, not 100%, but, you know, major chunk of it. So, um, you know, almost every industry has been impacted. Pharma is on a better footing because of, you know, medical and medicines can never go out of uh, fashion and uh, this, you know, pandemic, uh, all, you know, only increase it. And so another uh, sector which is doing uh, pretty, not pretty well, we can say comparatively well uh, is the essential goods, obviously, because you need, uh, uh, you know, the essentials to sustain and, uh, you know, uh, move forward. So other than that, you know, manufacturing has taken a huge hit and e-commerce, if you say, you know, you cannot, uh, so again, uh, you must have noticed there is no, uh, even Amazon or big basket like that. Uh, they have, they are short of manpower, obviously. So there's no, uh, you know, business in their hands too. And uh, coming to the hospitality, hospitality sector, if you see, you know, a lot of, because, you know, uh, the corporates have everything planned in advance, the, uh, you know, seminars, the conferences, etc. So they have taken a toll. Aviation is another industry that has come to stand still, at least in India. I'm not sure. I've heard, you know, certain you know, local flights are still operating in the USA. So, uh, but overall, the sentiment is, uh, you know, uh, pretty uh, gloomy. And uh, I don't think any sector which has been spared uh, because of this uh, pandemic disease. So pretty much every sector has been, infrastructure is another sector. We have a lot of infrastructure clients. So, you know, and infrastructure is mainly, uh, you know, labor intensive. And again, since, you know, lockdown, everyone is going back to their hometowns. So even if it's, you know, the challenge would be that once the lockdown is lifted, how do uh, 
or you know how much time it takes to get the business to resume because you know you never know the labor labor would be coming back or no so a lot of other uh, you know aspects to it so uh, you know uh, every pretty much every industry has been impacted and uh, you know coming to you know whether the government has done enough that's a very uh, uh, you know very sensitive question because again uh, you know even the government did not expected this so i think so far they are doing uh, you know whatever they can and uh, it's i think they have taken a you know wait and watch approach in the sense that again you know till as of now the four, till 14th april the, the lockdown has been uh, implemented but uh, i believe if the situation is not under control i believe uh, you know it may be extended which is uh, you know beneficial obviously because uh, immediate lifting of lockdown will also have its own repercussions because uh, I, you know it all boils down to a big, the mystery of treating the virus so uh, you know the government i believe they'll uh, release whatever uh, you know packages bailout packages maybe uh, you or you cannot rule out you know bail another bailout package i believe they are uh, you know playing a wait and watch game to see how the things go on because obviously again you know uh, the government also was the economy was uh, the indian economy was anyways in a, under a slowdown so even the government needs adequate funding to you know release the bailout packages so i think uh, whatever they have released till now it's not uh, end of the road i believe uh, you can expect something more to come out but as of now they have focused on you know, more on the below poverty line people which is rightly so because uh, you know the people who are hand to mouth you know dependent on their daily wages are the ones who have been pretty you know uh, majorly impacted and the you know the worst part is that there is no certainty as to when will it end so i believe the government uh, is assessing the situation on a regular basis and uh, they'll take appropriate actions if required so uh, karnik interestingly two things come out of your response which you know um, actually form the basis of my question is that number one you said that manufacturing as a sector will essentially be impacted something which i absolutely agree with and secondly you know the uh, policies and packages released for you know the workers you know who are relatively below the poverty line so these two aspects but you know given the current situation you know the mass exodus of the workers from various cities and you know predominantly say delhi and ncr towards other states that can essentially be a major pain point for the manufacturing sector going forward uh you know while as of now you know we understand that human capital is an important stakeholder in a lot of industries especially manufacturing right now uh in a country like india so do you think times like these and issues like these will provoke manufacturing businesses and by default other businesses to sort of push on automation well uh, yeah definitely why not because you know see uh... a lot of industries which have already uh, implemented robotic automation uh, like you know logistics industries and you know other e-commerce industries uh, you know in their warehouses and all so uh, it you know in india obviously uh, the adoption has not been at that uh, fast pace but i believe the developed countries have already started implementing it and uh, yes so you know technology uh, like you know artificial intelligence etc were all already on the cards but it was just about you know so if to, to, it would you know as of today or you know you can say and before the corona virus uh, that the government had a target of you know having uh, you know technology implemented uh, you know say in 15 years now i believe that would be advanced and you know maybe they targeted to release it you know make some policies around it or you know sooner than what they originally thought so again obviously it will be this will be a game changing moment uh, in sense of you know overall not only automation otherwise you know entire supply chains would be you know changed um, and a uh, lot of lot of process uh, procedural changes and all so yeah this could be uh, you know a stepping stone for us to uh, get into the you know more uh, automated things rather than more labor intensive but again india being such a big country there is there are a lot of unregulated industry as well which uh, you know as like handicrafts and all those cannot be done through automation because that that all that all is handwork 
So it depends on what which industry you are operating in. But otherwise, majorly, I believe yes, manufacturing and all, uh, they'll be uh, you know now thinking more seriously to implement it as soon as possible. So interesting that you mentioned that, and I will go a little further into the future uh, from a you know um, uh, how do I say this from a business point of view, and you know with the backlash that can arise. So given that automation, as we understand, is imminent, you know, in a country like India or any given country which is you know developing uh, as of now, uh, in the longer run, right? But once it is implemented on a macro scale, uh, what sort of backlash, if at all, if this backlash arises? uh you can anticipate from the unorganized or organized labor sector and how do you think that could be prevented in the near future or the you know uh, far foreseeable future see again you know there are backlashes to anything when you change anything so there was backlashes on gst there was backlash on lot of other things so you know one you know as a human being we are resistant to change but this is not about change this is about uh, impacting the lives of people uh you know who are uh, you know who would be re- majorly impacted by it so again I, it's difficult to answer uh, how do we handle that backlash and where obviously there will be a backlash there are trade unions and all in all the industries uh, so it's up to the you know policy makers the government to uh you know make a road map on how do they you know smoothly uh, introduce these things and uh, make an alternative plan for those who are you know directly affected by it All right so thank you for that and uh, now circling back to you know the current situation at hand uh, what do you make of the situation of the indian businesses which have a global presence and you know foreign businesses which have an indian presence like in in both these aspects so do you think international tax provisions like the apa which is the advanced pricing agreement will they require a revisit as a concept or and, uh, and and actually if yes how so will this happen and uh, what could be its impact on these businesses going forward you could actually talk about its short term and long term impact and uh, you know if you could just shed some light on that please yeah so there are two aspects so you know apas uh, are normally entered for 5 years you know in advance and for four years for you know for uh, it's called the roll back period so four years prior to the date of uh, your application and five years in advance and in normally in india so in initial year so india is again uh, leading the uh, leading on that front that you know they are pretty much uh, quick on signing the apas but initially it took five years for you know in some industries it took four to five years uh, for the apa to be agreed upon and signed upon so the the period of uh, the apa would all was already uh, you know uh, you know gone by and so you had the actual numbers wherein you can plug in what you have agreed and you know uh, comply accordingly but the problem comes when for the the, the apas which are in force so you know say the, you know two so out of five years say two two p two years of still remaining and you had agreed you know one year back that you know this is what our projections are and uh, you know the government agreeing so okay let's uh, settle at so much x percentage of margin so now obviously those projections will uh, change and uh, the taxpayers do have an option to you know renegotiate uh, if there is a change in law or in fact so this again is a change in fact uh, i believe uh, because uh, the entire dynamics have changed not only in india but globally so uh, you know uh, the 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 taxpayers would have to think through and uh, you know approach uh, the central board of direct taxes to you know negotiate the same and obviously apart from the ones who have already been signed there must have been lot of apas in negotiations final stages but even those need to be uh, you know uh, relooked and renegotiated but again uh, it would be interesting to see you know how the government reacts to it again legally uh, the taxpayer is uh, allowed to you know renegotiate but uh, i mean i haven't seen that practically happen so far because normally the projections are more or less you know correct but this kind of uh, situation has arisen um, you know uh, you know for the first time i, I in, in my lifetime i would say and uh, so this would be interesting to see how the tax authorities or cbdt reacts to it because you know india as an economy uh, is also going through a slowdown and the tax revenue the targets for not red, not being met 
uh, earlier also. So I don't know how do they react to it, whether they welcome it, you know, say, yes, we understand uh, there's a change in fact and in global circumstances, or they, you know, harass the taxpayers and uh, uh, don't agree to it. But uh, so it would be, it's it's uh, something to be seen, but obviously there's an option for, uh, in India, there's an option to renegotiate the APA. Okay. Uh, all right. So interesting. You know, so it will, of course, that, uh, you know, like but purely uh, from, you know, let's things, say this you know, sort of contractual obligations, you know, being green looked game. at. So uh, I'm going to shift the discussion to a know, slightly more personal note. Uh, how we understand that the lockdown sort of has carried out uh, a lot of from a lot of businesses to sort of point of view and from an international tax perspective. I would like to add one more thing. So this is not only about AP agreements. I believe uh, there are a lot of other, uh, you know, vendor agreements, other contractual obligations would require, would require uh, you know, relook. There are, there are uh, agreements which have that force majeure clause, uh, uh, you know, wherein uh, a party can back out if it cannot perform its, uh, you know, obligation due to circumstances beyond its control. So uh, it's not only about so AP is one angle to it, other than that. There are thousands of other obligations, contractual obligations, which any uh, entity has to fulfill. So, uh, you know, those need to be re looked at. I believe uh, uh, a lot of taxpayers have been reaching out to uh, lawyers for, you know, uh, you know, proofreading, not proofreading, basically vetting their agreements uh, and advising them whether, uh, you know, they can, uh, you know, and, you know, invoke that clause or not. And even going forward, the new agreements, I believe. Uh, you know, those uh, agreements will definitely have such kind of uh, you know, contingency clause kind of a thing. Like you said that, you know, contractual obligations, you know, are being re-looked at and APA is just one aspect of it. From, you know, from a business ecosystem point of view, you know, these sort of contractual obliga uh, obligations and, you know, uh, these sort of provisions, how do you think they will impact businesses going forward, you know, from a long-term point of view? See, again, uh, you know, this will obviously impact the, uh, you know, even the relations between the existing, uh, uh, you know, whatever it be it a vendor or someone else. But if you see from, you know, practical angle, you know, the, you know, the uh, other party will also, uh, you know, recognize the, you know, genuinity of, uh, you know, renegotiating why the, you know, opposite party has been renegotiating. So it depends on your previous relation, how uh, good you have been in, uh, you know, meeting out your obligations on time. So it will more depend on your personal uh, behavior and your uh, relations rather than on monetary terms. And uh, so, yes, I mean, uh, it depends on situation to situation, how you deal with it, how, what your, have, your experience have been. Because again, the other party from whom you are requesting to renegotiate, that party is, you know, itself a customer of someone else. So even that party would also be there negotiating. So it's a circle because, you know, everyone is at the same stage. It's just about who has, you know, deep pockets. He'll be able to survive it better. But otherwise, uh, you know, uh, everyone is in, uh, you know, equally uh, bad situation. So I don't think anyone is different. All right. And we do hope that the companies bounce back from this. And uh, surely, you know, we can be optimistic about it. Now, uh, coming back to my previous question, you know, from a purely from a personal work point of view, you know, we understand that, you know, uh, you're also working from home and operating remotely, uh, just like a lot of other people in various other companies. And work from home has, you know, suddenly become a major buzzword across the business community. So my question is, that how do you see this trend going forward, number one? And uh, Will it sort of drastically change working dynamics for Indian professionals? Okay, so now that you've mentioned specifically Indian professionals, then I limit uh, my conversation to Indian professionals. So yes, I mean, yeah, uh, you know, uh, it's a forced lockdown. So we don't have any other option but to work from home. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. Uh, it's difficult to predict uh, if it will change the you know working dynamics uh, drastically. It should uh, change, uh, you know, in some like in consulting firms like ours, you know, we actually already had this flexible work from home policy, which was actually in, you know, in, in, in practically implemented, not only on paper, like some other organizations. So 
uh, you know, from that perspective, personally, I don't feel much of a difference because we are already used to it and we had, uh, you know, adequate infrastructure to, uh, you know, uh, keep the work going without any interruption. But coming to the overall situation, uh, I believe that's a human tendency when you are in trouble, you normally you say, you know, yes, you know, we'll implement this now going forward. So there's no major interruption, but you will get to know once, uh, you know, things get normal, then we humans, uh, you know, uh, move back to our old habits. So you never know organizations, uh, even still, you know, a lot of MNCs on paper, they mention that, you know, there's a work from home policy, but in practical, no one follows it. No one follows it because no one is allowed to follow it because, uh, you know, some people say there's not much of, a, uh, you know, the efficiency falls or people are not serious. So India has that, uh, that uh, you know, trust issues, you can say. But going forward, uh, you know, the dynamics would certainly change. But to what extent, uh, you know, it would be interesting to see. All right. So that's actually a very interesting thing to sort of watch out for. And, you know, uh, given how you mentioned that, you know, uh, you being a part of the consulting network and the consulting uh, ecosystem, it's good that, you know, that you all are continuing your operations remotely. And it's a very positive thing to see. But just before, you know, I close this discussion. So uh, what would be your closing remarks on, you know, the current situation, the pandemic, the quarantine, the working ethics going forward and their impact and uh, its overall impact on the industry? as a whole and uh, what more according to you can be done to ensure that the road to recovery you know uh, so as to call it be it via government be it via the stakeholders you know uh, how can they make sure that the recovery is smooth so that would be my last question well uh, talking from the government's angle i believe uh, it's important that the lockdown is uh, you know uh, kept under check and uh, you know, it's not because, you know, if they lift it, you know, uh, you know, not immediately, but uh, as planned, you know, as on 14. So it's better to assess the situation rather than, you know, uh, lifting it in a hurry because that will have major repercussions because we should not forget that, uh, you know, we still not found a cure to that virus. So it's important for the government to, uh, you know, keep a tab on uh, the situation because even if, for example, the lockdown is, you know, say opened, uh, you know, it's lifted on 15th of April, you're allowed to go to your offices. So that's fine, you know, but then, you know, again, so the borders would be opened. And then what about international travel? So if, you know, then again, the risk is, you know, again, there. So they have to cautiously, uh, you know, decide on what should they do and uh, take the step accordingly. Again, uh, you know, the business would be impacted if there's a further lockdown. But as of now, at this point, uh, you know, it's not a, I mean, obviously the business do matter, but then it's more about uh, the uh, safety of human beings. So they, have, they should tread cautiously on that thing. Now I'm coming to, you know, uh, the corporates, the stakeholders. So once I believe everything gets normal, the, you know, work starts happening at, uh, you know, normally you're know, going out to your offices, etc. I believe, uh, the corporates uh, will, uh, you know, spend cautiously now. The lot of discretionary spends which the corporates make, I think they have, they'll have to think about that. And uh, so, you know, I mean, I again, it'll it may impact the hospitality industry because you know, I've, normally in the organizations, your hotel categories divide, you know, based on your designation. But I believe uh, that has to go out now because. As long as you're getting basic necessities, the feel-good factor has to take a backseat now. And that's how you, you know, avoid discretionary spends. You, you know, take a economy class in, you know, in, you know, more, you know rather than a business class. So it depends on uh, the industries because, you know, not to forget, you know, until now, you know, the startups, you know, they had foreign funding, uh, you know, in fact, uh, you know, uh, online portals like Flipkart, Amazon, you know, offering huge discounts, those have to be curtailed because so again, at that point, if so, Indian economy is slowing down, that is fine. The funding is still being infused and, uh, you know, the competitors are thrown out of the market. But here now, the funding itself is a challenge. So it has to be, uh, the, this is, the spend has to be thought through and it has to be, uh, uh, you know, only for, uh, uh, you know, situations on, on, things which are more important. So that is one 
uh, aspect which is obviously in our own hands uh, it's not uh, it's up to you how do you you know uh, work around it but again uh, you know normally again it will be you know as in india obviously the you know welfare of employees is treated as not even secondary it's the last you know last thing so i don't i'm not saying the corporates to uh, you know stop doing offsites and all because uh, you know rejuvenation is also important so that is, that should not be taken as uh, a non essential thing that is essential because that's the difference between uh, you know india and other countries where uh, you know that that thing is uh, taken as a last priority all right then thank you so much for being extremely candid and you know about, about this whole situation that offsides at the end of the day are still going to be a priority on your list but still it should be yeah <laughs> and on that cautiously optimistic note i conclude this podcast the big picture uh, thank you so much karnik for joining us today my pleasure sir thank you so much bye bye and to the listeners thank you so much for tuning in this was karnik uh, and you know in this very insightful and candid discussion so once again thank you guys for tuning in and uh, stay tuned for the next episode of the big picture